Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the AI behavior tree task move to. Okay, I've gone ahead. I've created a quick little example. Let's go ahead and check out how this works. So the move to task is one of the tasks that are built in with the engine currently. You can access it by right clicking tasks and choosing move to. Now by default, it's going to have nothing for the blackboard key. But keep in mind the first time you click on it, it's going to try to find the first valid object. If not, it's going to default to none and it's going to have an issue. So let's check out these settings. Well, let's see how it works first. Let me go ahead and run this. And you'll see my little enemy come follow me. Then he's going to wait five seconds and then the sequence will repeat and he will move to me again. And notice with the way it's set up right now, he's actually moving to the player itself and not the player's location. So let's check out and see how that works. So for the move to, we have a couple different settings in here. And then we also have one that is a advanced setting. So for our default settings, we have acceptable radius. When you're using a location for the key, because you can lose, use location or actors. When you're using location for the key, this is the acceptable radius that it has to be within for it to consider it a success or else it will keep trying. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this is in centimeters. So for the most part, you're probably going to want that to be a higher value. Let me go ahead and change this to the location and run it and we'll see what happens. You'll notice it comes to me and then when I move, it's going to move to the actual position. So watch, I'm right here on the edge. It's going to come to me. And then when I move, it's going to finish moving to where my actual center location was. And in the meantime, while it's trying to get to me, it's going to be stuck in this move to task note. Now, if you change your acceptable radius to something more like 140 in my case, and I run it again, we'll notice he gets to me, and now when I move, he's not actually moving forward. And if you notice, I'll move it to the side this time, you're going to notice he's going to stop a little bit farther away because the radius is now 140. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're going to use an actual location for your key, make sure your acceptable radius keeps them from continually being stuck because they can't get into your location. Now, if your location is a actual exit point or something like that where there's nothing obstructing it, then it's not an issue. Now, filter class. Filter class is the setup for your recast and your nav mesh data. If you're using the default nav mesh, you don't have to change this. If you're using custom nav mesh data or multiple nav meshes, you will know, and then you will know you need to change this. So it uses the correct nav mesh data for this AI. Allow strafe is simple. It allows the person to strafe, well, the AI in this case, to strafe rather than rotating and going forward. So by strafing, it does allow them to move quicker sometimes. So it's just a toggle option. See if it fits your character appropriately. A spaceship, for example, can probably strafe, whereas a car probably should not be strafing. Stop on overlap. Basically, the agent's radius will be la except the agent's radius, the AI we're controlling. It will be added to the acceptable radius if we're using stop on overlap. If we're not using stop on overlap, it's going to go ahead and use only the acceptable radius. Now, as you saw earlier, even using stop on overlap, if you don't have an acceptable radius that is larger, because you have to take in mind your collision volume may be larger or smaller than your actual mesh, and you want to make sure certain interactions are possible. So by default, this is turned on, and it allows you, when you're using the location version, to simply have less of an acceptable radius that you don't have to adjust, and it will compensate based on the acceptable radius and the agent's radius for your AI. Basically keep this on unless you're having issues. Allow partial path. This is our last option. Basically if you allow this on, if it can't get to your target because it has an incomplete path, you can have this checked and it will go as far as it can before it gives up. If you have this unchecked, it will not go anywhere. Now, 
The important part here is our Blackboard key. Now there's two things it can take. It can take an actor or it can take a vector, a location. And if you have it set to the actor, it's going to, well, in this case, watch. It's set to location. And if you notice me moving, it goes to the fixed location. If I have it set to the actor itself, it's going to update its target as it moves. And you notice it's now following. So that's something to keep in mind. One trick to this, however, is it only accepts actors and locations. And if you notice on here, you do not have actor. Well, you have to cheat and it's annoying because it's hidden. If you have an object right here, down in your advanced settings, you actually have a base class. By default, it's set to none, which means it's only going to be an object. If we go back here, you're going to find I can no longer collect my player. If you want to have something that accepts an actor be treated as an actor, change it to the actor for the base class. Now you're allowed to choose it and you can use the actor as the appropriate Blackboard key. So that is how you use your move to. It's basically a very simple movement component for AI that is built into one of the built-in tasks and it works great. If you want, you can have decorators above it or on top of it to prevent it. For example, a common decorator is here. I have is player live in my service. You can have a decorator on top of this for Blackboard, and then you can change this to, oops, that is the wrong one, because I did duration key, so we'd want is player live, and whether it's set or not, for example, or even if you have, for example, the player object, if it's player object is set or not. So for example, if the player object is set, you want this to run, and it's gonna run through fine. Now, in the case that my player dies, my player object will no longer be set, and therefore this will never run again. So that's one thing you can keep in mind. You can add decorators onto tasks, and something like this is very common. So that's it for the move to node. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.